Hello, I'm Charlie Burkett, and I'm at Texas Frightmare with uh, Mark Patton and Robert Russell from Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Now, uh, Mark, Robert, uh, there's a lot of talk about Nightmare on Elm Street and its connotations that it made for that it's, you know, a predominantly gay movie, but you know when I watch it, <laughs> I don't know why people would get that impression, but do you think they actually wrote, do you think they actually wrote Jesse as a gay character? Uh, yes, they did. Yeah. yeah, that's a short one. And then people picked up on it and um I think at this point everybody kind of like Right. If it was a few years ago they would have discussed it a little bit, now it just it is what it is. I, yeah, I think it's great. The thing is, when I first saw it, I, I mean, I didn't even think anything like that. I was kind of naive, you know? I mean, you could think the, the slap in the ass with the towel would chew me in the, the whole bar scene, but no. most young people don't care. So it takes a little while. Maybe. And we know you don't mind that train. So. Uh, it was like everything was so overt and things were a little subtle, but, you know, hindsight being 2020. And looking at it with a more with a more mature eye, of course you see you know the humor in it and you see the subtext in it. But you know what? That's not really what we believe the movie is about. It's because it has a little bit of that color or flavor or you know the movie is more lover boy and uh, the relationship that in the screen, I mean, I think come off strong, the relationship between Mark and I, yeah. and there's, there's a lot, I think there's a lot more that it sort of indicates than just that sexuality or sexual preference of one character or another. Right, right. There's more, I mean, there's more to me than that. Absolutely. Just in all kinds of more. Right. Especially the time, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like people seem to hone in on that. But I mean, one thing I really liked about the second one is the dialogue is really impersonal. Like, I mean, you're like, huh, I wonder what's going to happen. You know, is he going to get along with Grady? Is uh, he's going to... See, he looks like an off of Lisa. Well, you know, Mark and I did a lot of improvisation on that. We, we ran a lot of things by Jack's shoulder. There was a lot of rewrites for my character in particular. We moved away from a little bit more of the profanity and vulgarity that didn't really have any meaning for that generation and, and, and sort of tried to put a little bit of creativity, a little bit of humor, and I think it worked out really well. We, we, were, we were changing things all the time. Just more like normal people. Yeah. And our, our friendship was really in but I could get the picture of him, you know, it's like, you would expect him to be the rock or what you know, but it turned into something else, and you know, like it. Yeah, it definitely worked out. Robert, would you say that Brady, uh, Brady had a uh, rage problem with throwing his grandma down the stairs? What's that about? I'm going to be honest with you. I think that was a little bit of lack of creativity in writing. I mean, I, I, I didn't really... I, I think it was just really not supposed to be meant and to be true. I don't think Brady really threw his grandma down the line of stairs. I think it was actually more an implication of he didn't really want to be bothered with the characters sort of snooping in to why he did or didn't make the party. And so it was more of a throwaway line in that sense. I might really laugh at a different thing. I thought that Sydney was on him all the time. Ah. To avoid her at the party. So okay. he just didn't want to go because yeah. she was trying to bang him. This, this is true. I think it's the same. He's right. It was. It was about not really having to fess up or answer up as to the real reason why I was there or not there. Right. Because he didn't. He just didn't want to. Yeah. It was. I see. I mean, look at the people. At the table. He just didn't want to. Yeah. Uh, see, I told you I was not. There was a you know a lot of fans though. They really believed that my character thought I 
Yeah. 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 One thing uh, that I thought was very unique about Nightmare on Elm Street 2 was it's really one of the only ones that I can think of where the killer was pretty much done by somebody else. It was done by Jesse. Uh, uh, Freddy in Jesse's body. So really, I mean, when it shows Freddy, it's really Jesse doing the killing. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, I said there well, that's what I mean. Freddy was using Jesse's body. Yeah. So I wish they would have done that at the post scene. And then I think that they would have been a lot of love. Yeah. If they would have done just one shot of after the of me standing there. That would have been a good one. Well, I got a variation. Okay, cool. That would have made it very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys think there, there was go. more to Grady and Jesse's relationship as friends? Or? No. Just friends. Okay. I mean, there, there was, for, for, from my character's perspective, what would normally be a friend that I wouldn't mix with right, right. is somebody that I think I warmed up to because I saw his human side. Again, it doesn't matter about race or creed or sexual orientation. It passed all that because in the beginning, my character may have been the type that would bully him or, you know, maybe make fun of him or, uh, or, or to try to make myself look better you know, in, in, in putting him down. But I think that uh, Jesse's strength, his internal strength, his sweetness, his sensitivity, his naivety, um, his humor, uh, all sort of surpassed all that. And I think that's why we connected in the movie. Yeah, me too, and I think that actually, like, some people think it's a one-way street, but it's a two-way street, too. It's like, why, why did Jesse decide to do that? Absolutely. And uh, in Jesse's Lost in the I actually wrote a subplot for him, which is because uh, people always you know, think of you know, where, where, where they are. And I make the lover somebody else. Okay. And, and his thing is that he comes to my house because, because his dad was such a high school player that I knew that I'm the place that people have to be. Okay. And instead of, uh, you know, we just hang out. Yeah. I don't know that kind of yeah, that's why. That's why you know I speak from my character towards his, and then you see you get that that light from his toward mine. And I think that if he didn't get possessed by Freddy Krueger, we might have had another broke back mountain on our hands. You just never know. We should have had an Academy Award. That's not a word. He would have been the Jim Hall character, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Very high. I'd still be a lot. Um, tell us about like, Jesse's Lost Journals. What is that? Jesse's Lost Journals is a book that I wrote uh, for uh, Static Mass. And it's the subtext of what's happening. It's really great. And I sold out my first book. Thank you. 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 Thank you.